You're watching Drake Queen Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey guys and gals, Nevery here from Drake Queen Gaming. And so if you've been on Twitter, the gaming drag today, I'm coming back at you to the Let's Play episode of Nevin. So yeah, before we jump into it, just wanted to let y'all know that our Patreon is now for as little as $5. Y'all can help support the channel, get some awesome awards like permanent access to our community Discord server and full access to upcoming not safe for work videos. Anyway, y'all, let's go ahead and jump right back in. Alarm Shaney, we're up and let's go. All right. <clears throat> Still, you've got the right idea. But as I said, I only intend to give you advice, and it's up to you whether you follow it or not. I can help you navigate this new world, but the decisions remain yours. I guess I'm not risking anything if I listen to you. Perfect. In that case, my advice is simple. Whatever happens in this council, don't let them take the decisions. Speak up. Defend yourself. Make sure they hear you, even if they try to ignore your opinion. So be a player in the game, not a pawn. That's the exact opposite of what Maleborn wants me to do. Great. Whatever I decide now, I'm bound to go against the advice of one of them. I have to admit that the idea of remaining silent goes against my nature, but Mjellborn will be present at the Council to defend my interests. By Nevin, I would have preferred to have some more time before I found myself immersed in this kind of intrigue. I let out my, I let out, let out my second sigh of the day. Something tells me it's not the last. I guess if I have something to say, I'll say it. Great. That's all I could ask of you. After all, it would sadden me if anything happened to your pretty ass. He leans over and pinches my cheek, then he chuckles as he withdraws his hand. Hey! You'd better go and get ready for the council. Believe me, your first dive into the politics of the realm may be quite the trial. That's reassuring. When you say it like that, I feel like you're preparing me for a fight in the arena. Not every fight is physical, Eloise, and a political discussion can be just as dangerous as a duel with swords. I am no more, tra I am no more trained for one than I am the other. I don't know. I think you might have some predispositions when it comes to debating. It's up to you to prove that you can use your tongue. That last statement, he turns and walks down the stairs without giving me time to retort. Not that I could answer him. What could I say after that? Ugh, is it really necessary to make everything so complicated? Yes. The council chamber is one of the few rooms I have not yet been able to explore. I didn't really see the point of doing so. Finding it is not very complex. It is located just before the royal private quarters where I am still not allowed to enter. Unfortunately, I don't really enjoy the beauty of the corridors when I go there. My mind is far too preoccupied with what will be decided soon. The kings have reassured me that I am not a prisoner here, that I could not that I could leave if I wished. Could the council could the council succeed in changing their minds? Could they impose constraints on my life? I'm not naive. I know that my brand rep I know what my brand represents for them, and I also know that while Lusk and Aeon seem like nice people, they have a kingdom to run. I also know that they didn't get where they are just by being nice. My thoughts are interrupted when I see an elderly squirrel moving at a much slower pace than mine. Aww. Working my memory, I assume he is Edw Edwine, the merchant representative. Mailborn mentioned a squirrel, after all. He's the only one of the council members I know absolutely nothing about. I should probably talk to him now, while I have the chance, if only to see what he thinks of me. I move to stand next to the squirrel and greet him with a wave of the hand. Uh, Lord Edwine? What is... <laughs> my boy, you shouldn't sneak up on people like that. Oh, I'm sorry, that was not my intention. I suppose I can forgive that. You were LOE, right? Uh, the one and only. I just wanted to talk to you before the council, if you don't mind. Can, can I accompany you there? I can't refuse your company, but I'm afraid you'll find mine quite boring. Say that. I'm never bored with meeting someone new. There's always something interesting to discover. I envy your optimism. Is that the reason for your good mood? I must admit I expected to find you more gloomy, given what awaits you. I have reasons to be optimistic. After all, it's not like you're going to decide to lock me up in a cell, is it? That could very well be the conclusion we come to. The interests of the many come before those of the few. If we think that's what will benefit us the most... I pause briefly to observe the squirrel. He doesn't seem particularly bothered by what he just said, or by the idea of locking me up because of my brand. He seems to notice my disturbance, though, and turns toward me to offer me a brief smile. But you shouldn't worry about that. I don't think our lords would let something like that happen to you. It's not their style. They often let their emotions rule their actions. It's not necessarily a bad thing. That's what I do, and too, and so far it's worked for me. Uh, no offense, but you're not running a kingdom, lad. Your decisions and mistakes are your own business. I think it's more complicated than that. If I haven't influenced a kingdom so far, I've seen that a simple bard can do a lot at his level. Our actions are reflected on those we know, for good or ill. All the more reason not to let more mere emotions rule us, don't you agree? I would say it depends. After all, if my heart is in the right place, isn't that the important part? As I told you, lad, I admire and envy your optimism. Silence falls upon us. What a strange person. His smile has never left his face. His voice has always been gentle and kind, yet I can't help but feel as if I've been judged. Negatively at that. 
I don't really know what to think of Edwine, uh, but I suppose I should have expected it. Not everyone is going to declare their intentions to me clearly. It's time I learned to read between the lines. It's probably also time I learned to hide what I think. The gods know that some know that's that's something I'm absolutely no good at. Maybe I should go. Maybe I should get someone to teach me about it. I'm sure Vakad is an expert on the subject. Here we are. I hope you're ready. I raise my head. I can indeed notice that we are facing the now open door to the council chamber. I take a deep breath and step forward, as assertively as possible. The serious business starts here. Ah, Edwine, Eloise, we've been waiting for you. Good. Let's go. I enter the council chamber, five pairs of eyes staring at me intently. Fortunately for me, I'm used to dealing with other people's stares. The kings are seated at the end of the table, on simple chairs, but noticeably larger than the others. I suppose I'd even hear the difference in status must be clear. To the right are Vol and Astrid, as well as a third empty chair, to which Edwine quickly moves. For my part, I have to go next to Mailborn, who is sitting on the left of his father's. He greets me with a brief nod and looks, at, and looks ahead again. I barely have time to put my bottom on the bottom on the seat before Edwin before Aeon speaks again. I think everyone here is fully aware of the subject of this hastily assembled council, but I believe some clarification is in order. Our time is limited, and we need to focus our discussion. The brand of Nevin has appeared on the count the one who is now our royal bard and seventh member of this council. All eyes are on me, and I feel compelled to react. As I begin to raise my hand to wave at the council members who are watching me, Mealborn gives me a brief kick in the shin. Ouch, this is understood. I just keep my mouth shut. I would like to have a leg in perfect condition by the end of this meeting. We're here to, well, to decide exactly what to do with him, as well as decide what measures are necessary with regard to the neighboring states. I think we're all perfectly aware that they won't take the news of the brand of time's appearance lightly. A brief silence follows, and finally, Vol leans in as he speaks in his husky voice, focusing all his attention on his person. Hmm. How can we not see the How can we not see in this event the divine sign that has been sent to us? The brand of Nevin has appeared before our kings. Everything is crystal clear, my lords. The gods themselves want to make Frostfang the center of their faith, the heart of this world. Nevin himself offers us the power to do so. Entrust the rabbit to us. We'll take care of his training and education. He will learn his role as well as how to serve. Serve who, Vol? The realm or your cult? The interests of the realm are the interests of the temple, Lady Astrid, and I do not doubt for a second that the interests of the temple are also the interests of the realm. I am not sure of the truth of that last statement, but that is not necessarily the point. You wouldn't succeed in teaching him anything with your method anyway. You wouldn't? Would you doubt my abilities as a teacher? Far be it from me, but I know the bards better than any of you. This one in particular is not unfamiliar to me. I curl up in my seat, my long ears pulled down over my head. I suppose this is the part where she suggests I be thrown to the depths of a dungeon. And if there is one thing bards cherish more than anything else, it's their freedom. Eloise is a perfect example of that. Lock him in your temple, Vol, and don't give Owen oh, don't give a week before he tries to tear down a wall to escape. Eh, didn't see that one coming. Astrid seems to be sticking up for me, despite everything I did to her. I wonder why. I suppose you have something else to suggest. We must not forget that he isn't only Nevin's chosen one. He also won the contest, after all. She doesn't even try to hide all the hatred placed on the word one. I thought for a moment that she decided to forgive me. That idea just went up in smoke. To deprive us of the resource that is his voice would be a waste. Let him circulate freely within the walls of the capital. Here we will be able to keep an eye on him, and the temple will provide him with training. Eloise will have all the freedom he needs to accept his role as a bard, as well as that of Nevin's chosen one. The wide ears... The wide... My wide ears hear a noise to my right, and out of the corner of my eye I can see Lusk leaning over to whisper something to Aeon, who simply nods. As the tiger is about to speak again, however, he is cut off by Edwine. My kings, m may I? Go ahead, Edwine. As I have mentioned to you several times in my last reports, we have been dealing with a fair number of disappearances lately. Most of them, as you are aware, concern former Macadian slaves. Although I have at this time no direct evidence, I, I am fairly certain it's due to a Makad capture team operating in the area. It is safe to let everyone. Is it safe to let someone of such value walk around town freely? Do you think us unable to protect someone residing in the very heart of our kingdom, Edwine? I would never imply such a thing, Lord Mailborn, but you understand that these abductions are. These abductions, Edwine, have all taken place outside the walls of our city. Several of our best warriors and investigators are actively working to solve this problem as we speak. I don't doubt that for a second, my king. I just think that, well, it's better to be extra secure with our assets. Would it be more prudent to confine the bard to his quarters? Temporarily, of course. What? Did you suggest locking me in my room? 
What am I, a kid being punished? I start to get up to speak, only to be interrupted by another elbow from Mealborn, which takes my breath away. I can't help but give an annoyed look, to which he responds with a brief grunt. Really? He still wants me to just keep my mouth shut? Did you not hear what I said about the bards and their freedom? I am only thinking of his safety, my lady. His safety will also be assured within our temple, if that is the main concern. We assured Eloise that we would let him have his freedom. I would appreciate it if I did not have to go back on my word. The gods will forgive this broken promise, my king. The stakes are far too high right at the moment. I must join Lord Vol in this matter. It is a risk we cannot take. And alienate him? Do you really want to lose the trust of someone with such power? He'll come to understand that this is the best choice. The best choice for whom? There is no way we are going to let the clergy have total control of the bard. Calm down, Lady Astrid. There is no need to go into this kind of accusations. I am merely stating facts, Edwine. I'm really getting tired of them talking as if I weren't there. If I wasn't there, I feel like a piece of meat they're fighting over. I glance towards Mailborn again, but he seems totally caught up in the discussion taking place in front of him. I don't think he will have time to cut me off this time. But he advised me to keep my mouth shut, and he has a lot more experience than I do in this matter. On the other hand, Tenek is just as experienced, and he advised me to do the opposite. Hmm. Oh, that is a good point. Who should I trust? Huh. Uh, that is a good... Uh, I mean, I don't know. Tenok might have ulterior motives. He is a politician, after all. And he's a politician from, I think, a different kingdom? Yeah, he's a politician from a different kingdom, so I'm going to follow Mailborn's advice and see where that, where that gets me. Mailborn knows better than me what to do, and he understands what these people want to hear. I should leave it to him. I just hope he really has my best interests at heart. The discussion between the council members doesn't seem to be making any real progress. The arguments are going in circles, and accusations are flying back and forth. The prince puts a stop to it, pounding his fist on the table. Enough! Is this the image we want to present? Is the elite of our kingdom a bunch of children yelling at each other to see who is right? My fathers have already assured Eloi that he will not be a prisoner here, and their word must be kept. Let him be free to move within the city, protected by our walls. Let us not forget that this is not only Nevin's chosen one, but also our royal bard. We cannot simply lock a member up of a, a member of our own court. Lord Mailborn, with all due respect, this has not solved the risks. I have begun to train him in combat. We will continue his training in, so that he can defend himself or flee if necessary. Looks like I was right to entrust the prince. He really does seem to have my best interest at heart after all. Looks like we agree on the solution to this first problem. Aeon turns to me, a serious look on his face. Eloi, we therefore confirm our promise. You are free to roam as you wish, as long as you remain within the city. We also ask that you continue your training, both of your brand and your martial skills. Furthermore, I would like to remind you of your duties as a royal bard. The festival for Mielborn's birthday is approaching, and you must show that what you can do. Incorporating your brand into your act might be interesting. It doesn't take a genius to figure out that that last sentence is more than a simple suggestion. The kings want me to demonstrate my powers at the festival. I hope I will have mastered them by then. It will be easier to plan what I want to do if I know what I can do to begin with. In the meantime, there's only one answer I can give to Aeon. Thank you, my king. I will do my best not to disappoint you. I don't doubt it for a second. I can't wait to see what you can do. I'm sure you'll dazzle us. Unfortunately, Eloi, Eloi isn't the only subject that brings us together today. Makad and Kazal will soon learn of the appearance of the brand of Nevin, as well as the fact that its bearer resides in our castle. I fear that, as a result of this news, they will take further action. I would like us to make sure that said actions are not directed against us. I don't think we have much to fear from Kazal. The Empire has never taken any real interest in us. Lizards cannot even live in our temperatures. All right, I'm gonna pause it right there. I gotta head to work, y'all. So I'm gonna take me, I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep this uh, outro short. Thank y'all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell, and check out our Patreon. Anyway, I love you all, and I'll see y'all in the next video. Bye bye.